Okay. All right. This is okay. Roll on. This is an interview with William Nagel at his home, 251 North Main Street, Wellsville, New York, 6th of April, 2003. The interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Um, it's approximately 3.15 p.m. Could you tell me your full name, your date of birth, and place of birth, please? Uh, William Wentworth Nagel. I was born on uh, Madison Street, Wellsville, New York. July the 13th, 1922. Okay, what was your educational background prior to entering military service? Just graduated from high school in Bolivar, New York, and uh, half a year college after I got out, it wasn't all too much. I went to work for, I thought I was a torpedo man, I'd always be a torpedo man. I uh, got hired by E.I. DuPont, in Bradford, Pennsylvania, and I was a sh apprentice shooter <coughs> of oil wells, oh. and huh. and delivered made glycerin and delivered glycerin. Okay, um, where were you, and what was your reaction when you heard about Pearl Harbor when you first heard of it? I think I was over in Pennsylvania somewhere. It was afternoon or. News travel fast. Uh, we went over to see my Uncle Glenn. Things were different in those days. You took a trip, it was like a, going abroad or something. We, uh, My grandfather planned on one of those for a long time. For So, and today if you want anything you just get in the car and go. Mm -hmm. It's entirely different. Yes. Um, do you remember what your reaction was when you heard about Pearl Harbor? No. Couldn't tell. You. <clears throat> did you enlist or were you drafted? I was a volunteer. Okay, and why did you pick the Navy? Because my father told me it's no fun laying in the mud, and uh, that was good enough for me. And so. Okay. Um, when you were inducted, where where were you inducted? Buffalo, you right. Okay. The old post office okay. downtown, okay. that's in the southern part of Buffalo, uh -huh. I think. And uh, I uh, know something that was rather funny. I, I'm an old, only child, and I was brought up by my grandparents. My mother and dad took one look at me and decided to not put another one like that on the market. So I... Uh, I remember looking at the, there's 250 guys in northern Pennsylvania and in western New York State at the uh, post office and we stand there, no clothes on, and I looked at the guy up next to me, I always remember, and I looked again, he had web feet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I said, Jesus, I'll never make it in the Navy. I, I have got web feet. <laughs> so, but I did. Um, where did you go for your uh, training? Providence, Rhode Island, uh, Torpedo School. Uh -huh. They, they assigned it, you to Torpedo School right away? No, they said I was mechanically inclined. I worked in an oil field. Uh -huh. You could pass as a plumber, I guess, out of there. You know, you know different fittings, and uh, no, they said I was mechanically inclined, which is a bunch of baloney. But they didn't waste any time with you. They said this is it. Uh -huh. So, how long were you in uh, torpedo school in Providence? Probably two months. Uh -huh. uh, I know I was in the entire Navy three years, two months, and 17 days, and uh, I I missed four Christmases uh -huh. in that time, and no. uh, that's the only time of the year that I miss. I always want to go home for Christmas. That bothers me when I see these people, they just get over there and they want to come home for Christmas. Uh -huh. and. Uh, I missed four of them. What uh, kind of training did you receive as a torpedo man? 
Oh, I learned to march and the, the basics. And uh -huh. Got all your shots. That's about it. Okay, you didn't receive any kind of special training to be a torpedo man at all? Well, yeah, you went to torpedo school. Okay, yeah. well, what things did you learn there? Well, I liked the way they did business. They did it back in school where I went in Bolivar. Uh, he wrote every bit of it on the blackboard, and we had to copy it all down, uh -huh. carry the book with us. And in fact, we, we had to make a valve that, uh, how are you going to draw a valve? <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. And uh, that's the way they uh, practiced uh, with air in uh, where the TNT was. Uh, you fired, and then at the end of the shot, when it fell down to a certain pressure, it, it expelled all the water, the extra water they put in, floated, so you got to shoot it again. Okay, after you were uh, in school in Providence, where did you go? Uh, Trinidad, South America. Uh -huh. I was with a load of Marines and get them out of the country, I guess. They moved you fast. Uh -huh. What was your assignment in Trinidad? Well, I wanted a yeoman that could type 40 words a minute <laughs> on the old wreck that they had me typing on. I couldn't do 40 words a minute. So I got another train out to I think it was Charleston, South Carolina. They built that uh, and their sister ship in 59 days, if you can imagine. Hmm. 2,100 ton. Now, what, kind, what ship was this? Destroyer. Oh, Destroyer, okay. Well. And there's 288 of us that freighted aboard. Uh, and when we put it in commission, and the a uh, compliment for a uh, ship of that kind is 310, so the balance had to be officers. Uh -huh. What was the name of your destroyer? Albert W. Grant, DD-649. Okay, well, um, what kind of duties did you do on the Grant? I would, well... You mean uh, general quarters? Yes. Well, um, you know, I know you. Uh, what did you do? You worked the torpedoes on the ship, or I, I was captain of two two mount one. I don't know when I ended up. That was the one that didn't fire. They fired aft forward. Um. Uh, uh, what was my duty? Well. Nine times out of ten, I went to the fantail. I was a loader on a 20 millimeter. Mm -hmm. General and general quarters, I was captain of the tube mount if it was surface, and then if it was a subcontact, I was on the port side uh, K guns. So I had three different places to mm -hmm. go, but nine times out of ten, it was air. So. Okay, so uh, you had three different posts to go to, and it depended on what kind of action. That's correct. <clears throat> okay. Um, did you? Uh, where was your? Where did your ship first go on its first well, voyage? Uh, our first battle star was Hollandia, New Guinea. We down. That's down by. Uh, Guadalcanal, right uh -huh. there, and uh, Iron Bottom Bay, they call it. Uh, we went past that. Um, when, were you, when was the first time you were under fire? Well, we were, because we were seen, a uh, junior ship, we were sent in to draw fire, which they never did. <laughs> Because there was an observation plane up above, and uh, but we didn't know that, and uh, so uh, okay. 
Um, did you ever cross the equator? Yes. And I crossed the international date line too. Mm -hmm. uh, I I knew a guy his birthday was right across the street from me, uh, road from me, uh, and his birthday was the twelfth. Mine was the thirteenth. And when we crossed the equator, it's such a simple thing. But after I got through trying to explain it, I said, "Forget it. I'll tell you when I get home." Did you get one of those you went through an initiation? Oh, yes. You still have your shellback card? I think so. <laughs> I don't know whether I can find it or not, but okay. yeah, I'm a shellback and, and crossing the international date line. A lot of people didn't do that. Either. I saw some of the most beautiful sunsets in the world in the South Pacific. And uh, now, did you spend most of your time in the Pacific? All of them. All of it. Um, what were some of the naval actions you were, were you in, that you were involved in? I couldn't name them. There's little islands that... It's, it's like uh, when we got to Tinian, uh, they, my, my wife got there at the uh, beauty shop just two weeks ago. Yeah. Yes, she must have hung on to that a long time. Uh, in fact, her husband was one that McJordan was McCarthy and George Harris and George Harris Jr. is what these apartments were. And uh, she married Bob McCarthy, McCarthy, I guess. And uh, she... Uh, I knew her when she was a girl, little girl. Now, um, this uh, describes an action where your ship was uh, severely damaged. Correct. Um, what um, in Sar Sarago Strait? Where is Sar Sarago Strait? Where is that? Philippines. Oh, okay. That's the southern entrance. They come up a. Uh, they come up the strait, and that's why the two nights before there were three, they want us to uh, take the, they landed 30 some rangers on there, and in a half an hour, they traveled the four miles from the one end to where the thing, uh, what, what is it, signal bounces off? Sem semaphore? No, no echo. Oh, uh, echo, but what is it? Radar? Radar. Oh, okay. Geez, I can't think of radar. That's okay. Um, now, what happened to your ship there? It said in this article uh, <clears throat> that it was a night of flaming hell. What happened to your ship? Well, I've read a lot of books on it, and there's so many. We were hit so many times. I guess they call it. Friendly fire. There's nothing friendly about it. So you were hit by friendly fire? Mostly. Uh -huh. There are a couple of little ones, uh, equivalent to our 5 inch. It was 4.7 or 4.9. And they hit us in the back uh, and it threw our steering off. So they had to, when they got the wires fixed for so they could compete with the back, they tell them uh, 30 degrees right or something, and they did all the... But uh, the guy uh, got uh, got that letter from, uh, uh, what, what's his name, Forrestal. Uh, he, he was ahead of everybody down. Right under me is the number one engine room, and uh, they were all killed. But the captain said, get up here on the double to this. His name is BBV Lyons. The middle initial, I can tell you, is Vincent, but they call him BB. Uh -huh. And uh, he saw the light, too. He was a priest uh, 
Episcopalian priest. And he's the only one that got that letter other than me that I know of. Uh -huh. um, now, <clears throat> was that where you received your Purple Heart? I didn't get the Purple Heart. Oh, I you, thought you were... You, that you was the Bronze Star. Oh, yeah. Bronze Star. I thought you were wounded also, though. I uh, was in the, uh, two, uh, two years after, where I'd say about uh, 46 in the spring, of a piece of shrapnel come out of my shoulder. I probably got three in three. It blew my shoe. I had work shoes uh -huh. that I took aboard my own. At, uh, but uh, blew the heel off in the right one and uh, to fill the shoes with shrapnel. Huh. And when I got off the tube, you don't walk very far on that stuff. And uh, so you dumped the I dumped both shoes, and there wasn't a mark on my foot. Wow. I don't know. Huh. Never. I got three pieces for four. Should I had more clothes on, you could shake but, it. But you didn't get the Purple Heart for that? No. Gee, you should have. Well, in some island we were, we was bombarding, and the five-inch shells were... They had a gnat like. They'd come out the back end and they'd catch them, supposed to be. They're that long and copper. They're kind of heavy. And uh, I I was going by and one of them bounded over the top and hit me right square on top of the head. Well, uh, the, there was only one medical man left when we got through. But uh, this one guy was a nice guy he was from Brooklyn, and uh, he uh, he wrapped it all up. Uh, he, he was a pharmacist mate, and uh, he says, "I'm putting you in for Purple Heart." And I said, "I I know I was out of commission the next day, and I was still laid in bed." And the next day, I was just as good as new. And I, the only thing I wanted to do was take a shower and get the blood out of my hair. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, uh, I thought it was kind of funny because uh, Jesus, they took half his head off shrapnel, killed a doctor. Doctor, they picked out a for a death certificate. They're pretty. They found one finger that uh, they made a, him on the thing, and then, and then his teeth. Uh -huh. And uh, he was up by the the flags that they put up. And you ask how many times I got hit, and I always took it for granted. I was a good friend of one of these yeomen, and he said, we pretty near used the whole alphabet. One more, and we'd have Alpha through Zebra, you know. But, but we had Alfred through what? What, what was the twenty-fourth one? I don't know. Uh -huh. he gave me? He said I saw the official thing that went in, so it was hit twenty-four times. Your, your ship was. Yes. Ah. Now, where did you receive your brand star? Uh, San Diego. I, get, I didn't receive it. I said I was going to get it and uh, they had a big to-do. We didn't get dressed up or anything. They uh, San Diego. How long ago did you get it? The Bronze Star? Yeah. I, I don't remember. I got a lot of these things when I was home here in Wallsville. So but you got it after the war then? Everything was after the war. Now you received the Bronze Star for which action? This one and well, it's in the room there. You can read it. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say uh, at the end, I'll, I'll go get it and, and you can hold it and we can zoom in on it with the camera. Okay. All right. Uh, now it also mentions here that you were in a raging typhoon. Which was that? The one off Okinawa? Uh, can I backtrack sure. just a little? Sure. There was some uh, the seagoing tug pull alongside. It was a Chickasaw. They had, first time I saw them welding underwater, 
I was quite impressed with that. Mm. I never saw it before, so. Uh, and evidently this guy patched it pretty good. I got a couple of letters from him in there. And uh, he, he, uh, he, they must have done a terrific job because, uh, geez, I don't see how we survived that ty typhoon if he hadn't plugged all the holes. Oh, by the way, I got a new peacoat. There was a shot, one shot went right through the peacoat locker. Hmm. Everybody got a new peacoat. Oh. <laughs> so. Uh, Did they let you keep it? What? The peacoat? No. <laughs> I got my homeward bound pennant. I'm the only one probably kept that. Did you ever hear of a homeward bound pennant? No, I don't think no. so. It fr flies from the mast. There's a foot for every guy aboard. And it, it, when it goes out, it's like red and white, uh -huh. it, and it'd be longer than the fantail. They fly it part time coming home. When they take it down, they give everybody a foot. I get. Oh. I'll show you when you. Sure. So I don't know. I never talked about this very much, but then I went to one of the reunions and. Uh, Cleveland and have it all over the country. Only went west once. These guys down south were mostly from North and South Carolina. Uh -huh. Now you were on the uh, Albert Grant the entire time while you were in the Navy? That's correct. Except I saw you had some yeah. uh, six months on shore duty. What was that? Oh, I was uh, oh, uh, shore patrol. At uh, Union Station, Los Angeles, and uh, it was a good job. I lived in a hotel. What did you do there? Well, I worked with a, a good share of the police department. Mm -hmm. Some of those guys joined the Navy. They never went out, left the town. It, it, they found a home there. Mm -hmm. What? Um do you recall your reaction to the death of President Roosevelt? Yeah. What did you think of that? I How felt was... very bad. Why was that? Because I'm a Democrat. <laughs> I think that guy's a horse's ass we got in there. <laughs> and But we're not supposed to get into politics. Okay. <laughs> when we do, my wife is always here. She told me to knock it off. So. What did you? Uh, what was your reaction when you heard about the dropping of the atomic bombs on Japan? Oh boy, I, I, uh, I, I couldn't explain it, but I knew a guy from Bolivar. That's Antinian, mm -hmm. the gay left, and uh, he was in. Uh, he was a major in uh, oh, education. He. Mm -hmm. He was a teacher too. He knew what was going on, and, but he couldn't even get in there. Huh. He went. He wanted us to look at it. He couldn't. Uh, well, it's uh, it's one of Harry Truman's biggest assets, I think. Uh -huh. That's an awful decision for a guy to make. Mm -hmm. And uh, you think it saved a lot of American lives? Oh yeah, I do. But I don't think you needed a war where you just went. I think they could have done that different. Did you hear, it was on television today, I think it was, that instead of 10% like they reported, the casualties of women and children, 90%. Huh. 90. Huh. Um, when did you return home? <clears throat> I... Uh, I don't know exactly. It was because uh, the first bunch was going to get Christmas. It probably was uh, close to December. Was yeah. it forty-five or forty-six or? You know. It was uh, forty-four. I think when we uh, our shot was uh, October forty-four. Okay. And then uh, I got a picture here if you want one of uh, 
down the Admiralty Islands, we pulled in. They only had the only f uh, float and dry dock that was around. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, could you uh, hold this up in front of you and tell us when that was taken? Yeah, it was, I don't know the date, but uh -huh. uh, that's the way I looked. <laughs> That, t that nurse or the hospital. Oh, you can draw this up on the... What is that thing you got? It? You've got one. On the computer, you mean? Yeah. Uh, www.lonesailor.org Oh, and your picture is on there? Oh, yeah. Oh. And so is uh, my... Uh, I paid 50 bucks for my gyro setter to put him on there and his wife. Uh -huh. She was Navy. Oh. But I think anybody who gave their life should be uh, sure. on there. So uh -huh. that's what I did. Uh -huh. Do you know oh. what, what actually happened to the ship you were on after the war? I mean, is it... Is it I, I think it pretty much went for scrap. Because uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. they, they didn't want anything that had been boogered up that bad, I don't think. Had a lot of patches on it then. Huh? Oh boy, did it! I can show you some of it. Um, after you returned home, did you ever use the GI Bill? Yeah, to buy a house. And uh, guess what? My grandfather stepped in and paid for the house, so oh, I wow. very little. I paid that off, and uh -huh. that was it. Did you ever use the fifty-two twenty club? Yep, I probably. Uh, Three or four weeks is all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, there's too many jobs. And uh, did you um, keep in contact with anyone who you served with? Yes, I got the list in there. And now uh, we have reunions every two years, mm -hmm. and then uh, it's mostly a lot. A lot of them are relatives that go. Mm -hmm. Once they go, they come back. I know us have a pretty good time. When was the last reunion that you attended? Uh, that's what this leg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, down in Florida uh, last September. Okay. And uh, I hired my son-in-law to drive me down. I got them both uh, uh, right around the racetrack for 150 miles an hour. You had, you had to make 150. Wow. And uh, 106 bucks. <laughs> he, he drove around the racetrack? Well, and a race car. Uh huh. But uh, I say that the $6 must have been tax. Uh -huh. 106 bucks for wow. two. That, uh, oh, well, they. I wouldn't go across the road to see one of those races. <laughs> I just don't like them. Uh -huh. How do you think um, your time in service affected or changed your life? Well, it taught you how to uh, how to take an order, and uh, I don't know. Everything worked out good for me. Uh -huh. That guy wished me a lot of luck that forced all, but. I've been lucky all my life. Uh -huh. Now I got prostate cancer. I guess you, your luck runs out sooner or later. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, I'll I'll go get the. Uh, turn the camera off, or um, I'll leave it running. Okay. Um, did you ever get to see any USO shows while you were in service? Yeah, down in Trinidad. <clears throat> That's one thing my wife can. Uh, understand Yehudi Menu and the big violin. Oh yes, yeah. She had a crooked. She goes for classical music. Uh huh. I took nine years on the piano, and she gave me up as a sad <laughs> case. She says it's a shame to take money from your parents any longer. So I, uh, I, uh, I don't know. I. 
Well, the country school I went to, I made the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade in two years. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That was, and you uh -huh. seemed to learn it because if you paid attention to the class up ahead of you, you, uh -huh. you didn't. And so, so um, is that who you saw at a USO show? Was you who did Mendel? Yeah, but it, we got up and left, and I was in the front row. Why was that? You know? I, I, it's not my cup of tea, really, and uh, it, it wasn't the, it wasn't the right thing to do. Uh huh. Uh huh. You get a chance. Uh, Shore Patrol come around, told you to put your sleeves down, button up. They didn't want you mosquito to get you. Uh huh. But uh, I've seen some good ones, mm -hmm. in yeah. the, and uh, especially in the Los Angeles, they come, I always wore my brown star medal. Only wore about three, but uh, geez, we were invited out there and made out pretty good, like a bandit. Mm -hmm. Okay, why don't you show that up to the camera and tell us about it? Well, it pretty well speaks for itself. Does the camera show it? Yes, it will. Yes. So if you can hold it right there, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom right in on it. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I got my number one priority was that my forestall letter. Uh -huh. I thought that was a humdinger. And uh, so I never, I, I never wore all my medals or anything like that. I I was county commander in 74, I think it was. And uh, I was commander over to Bolivar. And as long as I was that, I thought I wouldn't Okay. Take it away from me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. We'll so you uh, you belong okay. to the American Legion? Do you still belong to the American Legion? Yeah, I joined Squadron 702, the Sons of the American Legion. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think if you go in and use a club, that you should join. That's my... Uh -huh. um, now you said you had part of this flag that flew over your ship? Yeah. Uh -huh. Want to see it? Sure. Uh, okay, now what is that? Homeward bound pennant. Every man is supposed to get got a foot of that. When he, uh, that looks like way over a foot to me. Yeah, it looks like uh, two feet of it. Yeah. <laughs> I may not like a bandit. So this was flown from the top mast of the ship. Yeah, and, it, it yeah. Was, <laughs> and I think there was a white one too. If I remember, there's. Uh -huh. I it think looks it looks like it probably was red and white. Yeah. Okay, and it was just a, a pennant, and each sailor received a, a, about a foot of this. About a, supposed to be a foot. So. Uh huh. But I never seen anybody. There's a torpedo officer. Really there's a. Do you want a copy of the, his death certificate? Or, there, there's one I really like. I, I, I think we have a copy of that. You sent us a copy I, before the yeah. letter. Yes, I like that better than the yeah. Bronze Star myself. Because uh -huh. I've been lucky now. <laughs> now that, that picture of him is a child in a sailor suit. Oh, okay. Why don't you hold this up in front of you so we can see that? Okay. Uh, hold it back towards you more. I can I can focus in on it easier. Okay. And how old are you there? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it looks like you're probably about four years old or so. Three or that four. Well, that car behind there, of course, that could be older too. Uh -huh. Ford. I okay. don't know. Okay. Alrighty. I got it. Okay. And let's see. I, I, I had them out here once. The, the letters. I he just wrote me. Uh, he just wrote me. Uh, 
Uh, oh shit. This guy never even had anything. I, they got a new guy over here. And when I got it, they put it on the front page. Mm. That important to somebody. Oh, here's, uh, oh, yeah. Here's, I want advanced torpedo school, too. Here's a copy of my certificate. Okay, uh, if you. Okay. Oh. Okay, got it. Okay. Well, I've got the whole thing if you want it down in there somewhere. You want to know what the ship did? I think it was fantastic. Here's a, how they died. You get up with a star after. The missing in action, he thought he was in a fire and he jumped over the side. Doing close to 40 knots. It's. Uh, he was beat down so far he never did come up. So they went back and looked for him. My dad, there, there's a school way back then. Look at that. Gee. Immaculate conception, huh? Yeah. Barney in the back, so Barney Schreiner had a artificial leg. I put a thing in the thing for him and Larry Fager. I, I covered the Protestants too. <laughs> uh, I, I thought anybody lost a leg deserved to be on the wall. There's a there's a Admiralty Islands. That's after it happened. We went through everything. Uh huh. So this is your ship. Yep. Okay, why don't you hold that up for Wayne to, to get that? That's a nice picture. Yeah. Uh, hold, Mr. Dangle, if you hold that up in front of you for the camera. Now, do you have any idea where you are on there? Admiral, yeah. Well, do you know where you are in the picture? Uh, yeah. White t-shirt over there. That, that guy that's right behind me is uh, superintendent of schools in Terrytown, uh. Connecticut. Graduated from Columbia. Okay. My brother-in-law from there. All right, got it. Okay, thank you. Okay. I had a lot of these made from the the thing. I, I write notes and stuff on, uh -huh. but uh, it gives a weight and uh -huh. Uh -huh. notice the speed. It never. Jack, they had an old four stack here once, they said. <laughs> mm -hmm. they okay, hit, well. Hit, hit, huh? 40, hit 40 knots, they took it down and piece by piece, put it back together, and never did it again. So I don't know. Okay, well, um, thank you very much for your, You're welcome. your interview. Yes, thank you. you know, thank you. Good. Thank you. Here's uh, the, I had them put in too. Okay. Now, when were you married? Uh oh, this is 40, not good. 47. Okay. 47, October the 15th. Okay. Now you said your your wife's father or your father-in-law was a famous actor? Well, he was head man for uh, Marie Dressler. She won an Academy Award in 1930. Uh-huh. And uh, he came home because of polio. He thought it was, you just had to be in the city to get it, so. Uh -huh. uh, it's the way they did things then. Yeah. Now, what was his name? Doherty. Uh, f f let's see, what, the, his name was uh, Jack Doherty. Okay. Uh, and uh, his, his uncle, or, wait a minute, his brother, if I can show you that one. I got too many sheets in there, junkers. Uh, his brother was uh, played for the Chicago, Chicago Cubs and the greatest billiard player I ever saw. He uh, and uh, 
hit the first one, first World Series, he had two home runs. Wow. And the uh, one that br broke his record was, uh, <laughs> here you are. That was, okay. wow. You can have that too. Is there two copies here? I, no, no oh, this is a letter behind That's uh, That's a captain's wife. Uh -huh. Before Ty Cobb, even. Uh -huh. He stole 47 bases. Huh? Right. Which one is he? He's the one with the. Can you see? Oh, the with the circle. Okay. Circle, circle around him. Okay. He got traded because he got in a fist fight with the manager. <laughs> All right. He, well. he says uh, the year before that team was called the Hitless Wonders, remember? Uh, Patsy the pugilist. Oh boy. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir.